Dear Agrist, today I'm showing here my background after enjoyed uh, several Amazon trips on the Rio Negro, starting from Manaus, because today I will talk about an Amazon fish, more Rio Orinoco fish, uh, a fish coming from South America, from a beautiful area where many fish are coming into our hobby. But some of those fish are coming in with problems and I want to share that with you, not sharing my experience during that trip, but that's my souvenir, but sending you my souvenir of uh, a fish disease that I encountered with a very special fish that uh, called uh, hemiodontitis with worm infections. Yeah, why worm infections? Because it's a wild fish. And that is, of course, quite common. And I want to share that with you because you can learn lessons from, from these kind of cases. And those hemiodontitis ascipenserinus here called is, is, you can see not much at the fish. Some were dying, some were getting skinny, nothing specific we really could notice on the outside, but they were not looking perfectly. They hardly moved. Well, this is the kind of fish. It's a whip tail fish, which is uh, belonging to the Loricaridae, which is a very specific uh, item. Huh? And, and the gills were nothing badly to see, maybe some dirt inside the gills, some, some clumping together. But, but no particular pathogen we could notice. Uh, a few parts were at the, at, at the edges, uh, how can I say, damaged. Uh, not yet, the bacteria maybe have had an infection, maybe it's gone already, but some little damage. And that can happen during the collecting of the fish, the transport, uh, keeping at the export or by the transport and acclimation procedure. So we had to go inside that fish and we took out uh, the excrements. See, we put them on a, on a glass plate and then we press it together with two plates. So I ex explained that in my Patreon uh, lessons that you can learn how to do this kind of examination and what organs to take. So I give you classes on that in my Patreon uh, classes. And what we could see then in, inside the organs, we found worms. Well, it's typical, it's a wild fish, we can expect worms. And in this case, the, the, the fish that was dying had a lot of worms. Some fish can live a long time with a few worms, lifetime. And, and, and some die because they have too many worms they received when they were living in the river in the Amazon. Here is a round worm, in the, uh, a nematode. And here in between are all metasecaria, larvae, worm larvae from digenetic trematodes, flatworms. Here's more all lined up in between the intestine and just taking away healthy tissue, uh, causing damage to the fish. Here you see the nematode moving. And let me show you the, uh, the intestine. Here you see a metacercaria moving around. Some are encapsulated, some are free living. So there's quite a few, there are hundreds in, in this fish, which is an unusual thing to find so many. But that's why I want to share that with you. It's, 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 it's possible to find. And well, think about it. It's a wild fish. So you can find a very wild problems with many, many different uh, worms. And here we see one of those with a cercaria, uh, digenetic trematode, which is as a larvae moving around. And when this fish will be eating, uh, eaten by uh, another big uh, fish, uh, giant giant like arapaima or something like that or or by bird this worm larvae becomes a larger uh, adult trematode here it has a larvae but still it's affecting the, the health of this fish particularly when there are so many and at the same time it causes damage to the organs uh, causing stress to the fish uh, the fish will become weak, become skinny and die away and secondary bacterial infections can invade into the organs. And you can see here the liver, which has a lot of uh, uh, vacuoles, large paces, here are a few worms. And, and, and that the organs are getting also affected. So the fish will becoming a very weak stage 
with, uh, of course, the risk that mass that bacterial infections also occur, like here, all those different tiny spots I show as bacteria. So what can you do as a treatment for this hemiodontitis? Well, you, we have to understand it's a wild worm infection. Uh, and the bac secondary uh, bacterial infection occurs then. You cannot try to treat with an anti-worm treatment. Why not? There are some worms free moving around. Ask your fish doctor, like Brazicantel is a practical one to use in this case. You can help with a fish food like the pumpkin that helps in the control of internal worm infections in fish. It's not a medication, but it's a help for the fish to fight off the worms. And after the 20-day the cure uh, treatment course with pumpkin, you can start feeding with uh, the grapefruit seed extract moringa, which helps for the fish to repair uh, during or after bacterial infection. Well, during or shortly after the anti-worm medication, you can also uh, apply an antibacterial treatment, usually a good antibiotic for the wild fishes, oxytetracycline or feraltadone, as your fish doctor. So that's some advice on those uh, wild fish. And you can save many, but the weakest ones, well, unfortunately, they, they will die. You, you can put them gently asleep and you see they're really wasting away. You can use a narcotic uh, treatment, a narcotic uh, uh, treatment sleeping drug uh, called uh, Narcomor Plus from Accorda Munster. So that's some advice I can give you on this specific wild fish, which I rarely encounter in my work because it's a very unusual fish. So this was a case of fish disease coming from the beautiful Amazon. And of course, for me as a fish doctor, with very interesting diseases it can happen. It's part of getting fish from all parts of the world, not only from the wild, but also from fish farmers. We learn lessons and you can help to take care of your fish by watching my videos. Thank you for watching.